What is going on guys? Pixcam20 back again with a brand new video. What it feels like forever, honestly. It's been a while since we've been here on GT Sport. Took a little one week, one week and a half break away from this game. And honestly, it was the most refreshing thing I've ever done. Um, it felt really good just to get onto other games, play games like Assetto Corsa, uh, iRacing, also other stuff like Fall Guys, you know, all the other games I have in my library besides GT Sport. And actually, I think it actually improved my my pace on the game I actually was able to get a lot more competitive lap times and uh, be a lot more consistent with my races and also have a lot more fun and uh, close racing with some of the guys as you guys are gonna actually see uh, throughout the video so uh, I don't want to waste any more of your time I know you guys want to just get straight into the racing so uh, before we jump into it if you guys really enjoy the content please subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video as it really helps out the channel when you guys do so anyways that is enough promoting myself let's jump straight into these two crazy awesome fun races now as we jump into our first race we are not starting in sixth places we are actually starting in third place this is actually a race that i did earlier in the day and this is a really cool fun race as we get our three two one and you guys might see something different on this video that you guys haven't seen in any of my other videos and that is the camera view so if you guys haven't noticed yet i am racing now in the front bumper camera view i decided to test it out as i saw a lot of fast guys using uh, the front bumper camera view and honestly i have to say this is probably the best view in all of gt sport because if you put the camera view on the roof you do not get that dandy little mirror on the top of the screen that we get in the front bumper because uh, honestly i don't know why polyphony doesn't do that but it, it just offers so much advantages here because you do get that rear view mirror and with using that rear view mirror you can put an additional hud on the bottom so i can look at my lap times uh, mess around with my fuel mapping or even just mess around with the brake balance without having to worry about knowing where there's a car and seeing where the car is going to try to make a move as with the rear view mirror it's just a lot better than the radar because you can easily start pinpointing when the car is trying to make or a car behind you is trying to make an overtake and see where they are gaining advantage on you so uh, again just really really trying to get used to this camera view as this was like our very first day that I actually decided to, to use it completely throughout the entire stream so um, we're gonna see what we can do here as you can see we're losing time to the front too um, as they are just being a lot faster than us right now we are in uh, currently third place with about three seconds away from the first place guys so uh, again just losing some time here as we come into the final corner uh, breaking right after the 100 meter board we go a little bit onto the grass and that actually helps disrupts the car as we go a little bit wide and you can see now that we have the Aston Martin right behind us as we are able to force away in front of him but we're gonna hold off the outside now as we come into lap number two passing the start finish line the Aston Martin is on the inside so we're gonna make a cheeky move Go straight into the inside, try to break as late as we can after the 100 meter board. But the Aston Martin actually takes a very aggressive wide line and makes the move stick. So he makes a great move. And I have to applaud the Brazilian here as that was a great overtake on the outside heading to the source as we go into the replay. See he's on the inside here. I go into the inside, he makes a switch to the outside. We make a little X there as he just breaks as late as he can. And somehow was able to make it stick. Gets a great run on the exit. And now we are demoted from third place into fourth place as we are going to try to catch up to the Brazilian here. Luckily, we have this huge straight right here as uh, we come out of uh, Radion here. And we're just staying in the slipstream of the Brazilian. Hopefully, hoping that the Brazilian can give us a great tow. Maybe we can catch up to him and try to make a move onto the inside of turn number five. But uh, going onto turn number five into the right-hander, we break right after the 100 meter board. And we're just a little too far back to make any type of move. But in doing so, we're allowing the Corvette behind us to get really close to us. So uh, in a little bit of a pickle here as we have to get around this Brazilian ahead of us. But he is pulling us away as he's a little bit faster than us. But um, we're able to uh, hang on with him. And luckily, the slipstream is pulling us closer to him and allowing us to, allowing us to stay with him throughout the lap. So uh, as we head into no name right here, uh, we missed our apex just a little bit. But us and the Brazilian were able to get away from the Argentinian behind us so we're now starting to form a little gap from fifth place so that's gonna lessen the pressure on us and hopefully we can start focusing more and more on hitting our marks and just staying with the Brazilian to uh, find a good place to make an overtake as we're now heading to the middle sector now going to the right-hander breaking right before the 50 meter board the Brazilian goes a little bit wide to clip our apex here and you can see how much time we're actually gaining on him now so we're able to cut the gap between us about tenth of a second but coming into lap number three we were able to really slice the gap now as we are 
down to about three tenths of a second as we head into the source. Going to the source, he misses the apex just a little bit as we go a little bit, um, I guess, closer to the apex than him. And we're able to catch up to him just ever so slightly now as we head into Arouj and Radion for the final time on this race. Staying in the slipstream, we're only about three or two tenths of a second away from him now as we come out of Radion leading us in into the Camel Straight. So, Onto the camel straight here. Can we get a good slipstream enough to pull us alongside of him and make an overtake as we head into the right hander? You can see we're getting closer and closer now as we're heading into the inside. Now, side by side as we head into the right hander, we break as late as we can and we're going side by side now as we come into the right and to the left. Double wide here, making some great aggressive overtakes here. And we're able to do so now as we cut right in front of him, shift onto the inside and try to defend our position now as we head into the right hander. Breaking as late as we can, the Asimar tries to make a move onto the outside. He's able to make a stick just a little bit, but we just get a better exit now as we're able to hold off the inside as we go into No Name. Cut right in front of him, break as late as we can, and we're able to make a really, really aggressive overtake on the outside of the Aston Martin as we go into the replay here. You can see he tries to make the same move that he did into the source on lap number uh, two and he, he almost made a stick as he was on the outside had the preferred line going on the inside into no name but we just cut right in front of him and the brazilian had a lot of respect with me as he uh backed out of the move there as a lot of guys would probably would have punted the guy ahead and uh, i have to really applaud the brazilian the way he was racing with me as we were doing some really hard aggressive racing but it's still not over yet as we still have about half a lap now heading into the left hander so coming to the right hander now breaking right underneath that sign i guess you could say it um we're able to hold off the smr here as he's actually starting to get pressure from the corvette and that is great to see on our rear view mirror because the more that the corvette fights with the aston martin the more they're going to slow each other down and the further we can get along or away from them as we now head into blanchimont for the final time so heading to the fast right hander we clip our apex really well and you can see right here we're losing time on the aston martin but the only thing is that we do have this straight here into Blanchemont, so he can make up some time right here as we head into the, uh, the sweeping left-hander. Going into Blanchemont now, this is going to be the best time to get away from him here as he's not going to have that much of a slipstream. As we come out here, the Corvette's trying to make a move onto the inside of the Aston Martin. We're going to defend our position as we head into the final chicane. Are we able to defend our position as we just park it onto the apex? The Aston Martin takes a look onto the outside takes a look onto the inside as we go side by side drag racing to the line and we're going to be able to get this third place here a really really hard fought third place as uh, again the brazilian was just racing really difficult with me and honestly i have so much respect for him because he was just racing aggressive but at the same time he was racing fair and clean as we jump into our second race now so getting our three two one the one problem that i have with spa frankenstein is you can see how far back we actually start from the cars ahead of us because we start um, on the last chicane. Uh, I just don't know why they haven't been able to fix that. They should probably change the starting grid or starting line from uh, that spot to coming off of the source because there's actually a second start finish line right here. If you come out of the source, you can see right here that there's a grid spots right here and then there's a start finish line right about here, I think, or a little more forward, right? There, there you go. There's your start finish line. So I think they should change it right there. That's how they have it on ACC, but I don't think GT Sports going to be able to change it um, until GT7. So uh, just going to have to keep complaining here about the uh, starting position that we have until I guess the next game if they even change it. But coming down the Camel Straight for the first time now, we make a move on to the inside of the Audi. He gives us just quite a little bit of room as we're making contact now, and he actually bumps us out of the way, and we lose fifth place because of that he actually gets a three second penalty and uh, at first I didn't think he deserved it because I thought I made an aggressive move but going back into the replay you can see that the Audi does try to shift his way into the inside to block me but he left me just enough room right there for me to make a move onto the inside and then he cut me off right when we were alongside of him and then he got frustrated at me tried to bump me out but hey I guess that's how the Audi thought that it rolled but um, again, I made a very, very aggressive move, almost made a stick, but the Audi did push us out wide and then rammed us off, and luckily he did get that three-second penalty as we do lose a uh, sixth position to the Brazilian that we were fighting against last race, but um, we do are no or we are now getting pressured by the Porsche behind us, so we're going to have to do everything we can to try to catch back up to the Brazilian and hopefully be within that three-second gap of the Audi right ahead of us now as we head into the two left-handers. So, 
going to the two left-handers. We have a car onto the outside of us as we're trying to keep him pinched onto the outside. But he is getting alongside of us and getting ahead of us here as we head into the right-hander. Give him the spot there. We're going to lose seventh position here as we are now heading to the left-hander. And now we have the Porsche right behind us here as he's been really, really uh, desperate making some lunges on the uh, seventh place driver. So uh, I was keeping note of that, keeping an eye on him now as we head into the right-hander. Going to the right-hander, there's actually a yellow flag. So uh, looking to see what happened here is there's a car sitting in the middle of the racetrack and we are able to make an easy overtake on him as it was one of the Americans. Not sure what car he was driving, but we're able to now get into seventh place as we head into the, uh, the source for the second time here on this race. Going into a source here, going to the first corner. Porsche is right behind us. Is he going to be able to get onto our rear and try to make an overtake as we come out of the Camel Straight? Who knows now as we are coming down into Abruj and Radion. And again, the Audi right ahead of us does have a three second penalty. So that should benefit us now as we head into uh, Radion onto Camel Straight. Going into the Camel Straight, this is where penalty zone is located at. So the fourth place driver is going to have to serve his three second penalty. But it is more than a three second penalty when it comes down to this racetrack because uh, you lose so much time and so much speed and momentum that it just turns from like a three second penalty to a four or five second penalty. And you can see right there, we're able to make an easy overtake on the Audi that had a three second penalty as we now set our sights again on the Brazilian fighting with the American right ahead of us into the middle part of lap number two. So going into the right hander, the Porsche takes a look onto the inside. We cut him off a little bit, but you can see he's now all over our rear bumper as we're starting to get pressure from the Porsche now as we head into the no name. Staying right behind the Brazilian, we go a little bit wide, but that actually helps us out a little bit as we get a, a better exit than the uh, Porsche here. So we should be able to hold our, our position now as we head to the left hander. Again, just keeping an eye on the mirror, keeping an eye on the Porsche, making sure that he doesn't try to make any type of lunge, but at the same time trying to catch up to this Brazilian ahead of us as we are now starting to here cut off about two or three sec tenths of a second on the Brazilian. We are now right behind him here as I'm setting my sights on him, trying to set up a, a position to make an overtake, but now the Porsche is going all over our rear bumper here as we defend our inside, going into the right-hander. Going into the right-hander, I was so focused on the Aston Martin right ahead of us that I didn't realize that the Porsche was trying to make a move on the right-hand side. Makes a really, really desperate move there as he makes a huge lunge there, makes an aggressive pass, pushes us out of the way, and we actually lose two positions because of that. And uh, again, I just was not expecting the Porsche to try to make an overtake on theirs. That's not a really good place to make an overtake on people as we try to uh, push the Jaguar, or I don't know if that's the Jaguar behind us, but I think it's the Jaguar right behind us, a little off as uh, we're trying to defend our position as we come into the final chicane. Going to the final chicane, we miss our breaking point just a little bit, but it doesn't hurt us too much as we're able to hold it onto the inside of the Jaguar. And we have now three cars right behind us trying to get around us. So on the final lap now, really really interesting race here that's been evolving as we are now coming to the first corner defending our position into the first corner we're able to hold off our position on the Jaguar but we do have a Persia right behind us also trying to get around the Jaguar and now we are coming into Arush and Radion for the final time of this race going into Arush here the seventh place driver which is the Audi tries to make a move onto the inside of the Porsche they make contact there and the Audi actually goes into the wall coming off of Radion he loses a position there, so that's an easy position for us as those two guys were just aggressively beating and banging there coming out of the source and into Arouge, and that was never going to work. Too wide never works going into Arouge and Radion. But you can see now we're gaining so much time on the Porsche. He defends the inside. We try to make a move onto the outside, and the Porsche actually pushes us out wide, and the Persia right behind us almost ran into the back of us and that was a very very naughty move from the Porsche right ahead of us as he did force us out wide on the right hander and uh, now we have to try to catch right back up to him as um, again we have to uh, set our sights on him not worry about the guys behind us as they're all over our back bumper and uh, see if we can catch up to this Porsche and hopefully make an overtake before the end of the lap as we do have about half a lap left now so in the middle of the lap now 1.2 seconds away from the Porsche right ahead of us. We break right out to the 50 meter board and honestly it doesn't look too good for us as we are not able to catch up to him as we come into the final chicane now. On the final lap we're unable to catch up to the Porsche but we're able to get away from the cars right behind us as uh, you can see some guys are just still making contact with each other but we're able to finish this race off in seventh place get a little bit of driver rating points as uh, this was a really really interesting race a lot of aggressive beating and banging here 
um, from me, from the other cars. It's just something that happens here at Spa, especially when uh, you only have three laps to make as many positions as you can. You're going to expect those type of aggressive moves, which, again, I can't be too mad at everybody else because, again, I was doing some aggressive moves too. But uh, before, we jump, before we leave it here, uh, if you guys, again, really enjoy the video, please subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video as it really helps out the channel when you guys do so. And if you guys really enjoyed that video, I hope to see you guys on the next one. Peace out.